Excited to welcome an old friend, Rachel Bowen from the band Skid Row. We're not going to keep you too long. We're going to ask a guitar player, bass, guitar, it doesn't matter. I'm going to ask you a hypothetical question. Okay. Which is the theme of Lisa's next book, Immortal Guitars. Immortal Guitars. guitars. The first one that comes to mind is, uh, man, well, there's a couple, but Paul Stanley's Iceman from back in the day, um, Jimmy Page's Double Neck from back in the day. Which is uh, featured in my first book, 108 Rockstar Guitars. That's awesome. With yeah. Scotty's guitar, actually. Wow, yeah. Man, uh, there's so many. That's such a good question because I never really think about stuff like that. I mean, the first bass I got was a Gibson Grabber because Gene Simmons used it, you know? And so, yeah, there's a lot of really cool ones. So you were really inspired by Kiss then? Big time. Kiss and the Ramones and ACDC were kind of what made me want to do what I do. Without a doubt. They just had like, all of them had their own thing, but there was a one reckless abandoned thread that went through all of them, and it was just what really made me want to do this. My first concert was Kiss. My second was Alice Cooper, and my third was ACDC. Nice. So, while I don't play guitar written yet, really, I'm taking lessons. Those bands really inspired me and etched, you know, into my heart, and my soul, the music, and I was well, ruined forever after being at an ACDC concert. Right. What, what do you think defines an immortal guitar? The artist, the music, the the era, the well, what is? It? From back the in instrument itself. The instrument itself from back in our day when you used to wait for a circus magazine to come out or for when you had to wait a month where everything wasn't so instantaneous. It'd just be like you'd see that picture of, you know, Paul with the Iceman or, or Jimmy Page in the center fold and it's just like you'd see it and you'd see it over and over and over again. And you know, it's just like Willie Nelson's trigger, you know? Yeah. It's like you see that guitar and that artist loves that guitar so it becomes special to you as well you know how about chris squire being a bass man yeah i mean I, I was never i was always like i said i grew up like punk rock and simple stuff but i always appreciated him because it was just like so different than the way i thought but all his bass lines were so iconic and just like john entwistle you know i couldn't play like that if you held a gun to my head but what did, what did, i love it what did paul weller play paul weller the jam punk rock 70s what kind of bass yeah i was wondering because he know. was connected to the who that there's a lineage there british oh okay british I, I punk. yeah I, okay. I don't roger know. waters roger waters he had a whole bunch of different ones he, he shot I, one of his he uh well, the fender thoroughbred oh okay yeah because i was gonna say he was a fender guy he played a lot of p basses um on that song hey you i, I believe it was uh did he play a precision fretless? I'm not sure, but yeah, he was so good. And Jacko. So, I don't know what he played. Pistorius? Yeah. Yeah, he had a Fender P bass. Oh, did he have a P bass? Yeah. Right, he did a lot of fretless stuff. I never really, this is so bad to say, but I never really listened to him. When I, Whenever I heard him playing, not knowing it was him, I was like, wow, this guy's a badass. I was like, oh, that's Jacko Pistorius. So, you know. That's it, buddy. Cool. That's you're it. you're up. Thank you, Rachel. Killer.